You're listening to Oilers Nation Radio, presented by The Nation Network. Subscribe for free on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts from. Hello, Friday edition of Oilers Nation Radio. Tyler, Bag Milk, Rick, Dan, Liam, the whole crew is here. And, and the, Shohei? Shohei's almost here. I was going to say, it's not ONR, it's Show NR today. Pretty close. He's, he's yeah. over the great yeah, breaks right earlier. I don't know that I've seen Canadian Twitter all as focused on one thing at the same time as we are today. So Canadian Ka- sports Twitter. Kawhi got a little bit... Kawhi got kind of the same attention, but at the same time, it got more The raps anti, aren't as big as them either. But it got more anti-attention too. Yeah. Like, hey, yeah. stop this, blah, blah, blah. This right now, there is nobody telling you to stop watching the plane. Everyone's sitting there watching the plane right now. Even like... I mean, Ben Nicholson-Smith, a Sportsnet reporter who's very good at this kind of stuff and has always kind of been, in the fan base at least, a voice that has calmed things down. He was a guy who sent out a tweet and was like, hey, like Jays fans watching the plane, you're not alone. Executives around the league are doing this kind of stuff right now. And like, Everybody is. I know a lot of people have tweeted out, no decision has been made yet and big name insiders. And that's ultimately who you have to believe. But like, at the end of the day, one of the biggest Dodgers reporters in JP Hornstro, a guy who's covered that team for like almost a decade, I think. He's coming out and putting his reputation on the line, saying he's not going to the Dodgers. He's going to the Jays. Sportsnet Radio in Toronto. Again, the rights holder of they're the team. The show short. They're cutting their hockey show short and going live with Blair and Barker, whose show isn't even a regular thing anymore because it's the sh- off season. It's literally for Shohei Watch. Otani Watch. For right? Otani Watch. That's and they're, they're starting it. it at 5 p.m. Eastern, which is exactly when Otani's plane is expected to land in Toronto. So, like, there is way too much smoke here for this to not be a legitimate thing that's happening. Happening. It's happening. And I was, it, yeah. I'm a fly on the wall for all of this. I'm not a Blue Jays guy. I, I've been a baseball and a sports fan for a long time, and I was all the way on the fence. Like, didn't think that it was going to happen until I heard the fact that it's Japanese Prosperity Day, and that this is the day that he signed with the Angels back in uh, yep. 2016. There's just so much. Like, I'm so far down the rabbit hole on Shohei Otani Day that. I'm believing opera singers out of Toronto yeah. talking about sushi reservations downtown. I'm tracking the plane. I've had this live tracker open all day. Now flying over Grand Rapids, Michigan, by the way, just for the record. At this point, you, this is no longer like a conspiracy thing. Like you're just getting involved in it for the for the show. This is it. the show before the show. This is the you know not the su- this there. not the this is not the Super Bowl. It's you know the lead up the six hours before. It's done. It's over. It's it's happening. Um. Every yeah, you can't really announce it. Announce it because they don't. I guess you don't really know. But. You want him there. You want to announce it with him there, putting on a Jays jersey. Yeah. There was also a little rumor going around that the Jays official shop outside the stadium in Toronto is being was being covered up in the last couple of days. Again, something you're doing if you're looking to do some sort of grand reveal, right? And there's Otani jerseys everywhere. In there. Have there been pictures of or, this? That's something. You, that's or something renovations. It's easy to show or renovations. Fair. Could be renovations. Yeah, renovations. Could be renos. They're just, doing renos at yeah. Rogers Center. It's not like that. Ah. Not something <laughs> just say. Ah. All right. Uh, where did they announce it from? They would announce it from inside. They're going to announce it. These, well, I don't know who said. I think my is, friend Rick. They're going to announce it as him sitting his legs off the fucking yeah. CN Tower like Drake. He's doing the little walk around the edge like, hello. Just waiting for someone to zoom in enough to be like, holy shit, that's him. Here's what they need to do. They need <laughs> to have Drake. I don't know where days. Drake's at right now. Drake hype video. He does like pop star or something like that. And Drake's then Shohei the, comes out. Come on. Drake's in the studio. He's trying to work on some rhymes. See the what rhymes are Tommy. Like, Can you imagine if it's like some incredibly pre-produced thing? Like they've very clearly been working on this announcement video for like two weeks. <laughs> the reason he was here on Sunday was to just get all the dress rehearsal down yeah. and everything yeah, ready and squared away. All right. Uh, if something breaks on the Otani front, you better believe we're going to be talking worry, about I'm it on this podcast. BM's got the Twitter going. Tyler's hosting today, so I can yeah. watch a flight. But we are going to do the regularly scheduled programming as well, which means we be- begin we'll with... <laughs> we'll see. Now. With now. the delicious debate for our friends at Wendy's. Uh, Shohei, you're going to love Canadian Wendy's, buddy. And I know you're going to love the syrup dipitous combo that features the new limited edition chicken strips and French toast sticks in one bite. For those of you dreaming of smoking the competition, head to dailyfaceoffsurvivor.com. Play the Wendy's Daily Faceoff Survivor game. See if you can survive the entire week. See if you can win some prizes. For those of you who have lost out like me, you can still be a winner by ordering that new chicken strip and French toast stick combo from Wendy's and the Wendy's app. The delicious debate today. 
It's positive, boys. The Oilers have won five in a row. I have declared them on Owen every day as officially being back. The Can quest- I ask you a question? Sure. I tweeted it. Mm-hmm. Five-game win streak. You're officially back on the bandwagon? Yes. What's the number? 88% chance of making the playoffs in my brain. 75. 75. <laughs> We're moving. I guess it's going in the right direction. We're moving. <laughs> Join us, boys. They're Join good. us. I'm just being real. Would realistic. you like a t-shirt? A 100 t-shirt? No, not until it's secured. Join us. It feels good. Yeah, all they need to do is catch the Arizona Coyotes oh. somehow above the Oh, Liam, get out of here. Those Pitchfork. little devils out in Arizona. Uh, the question today, Dan, I'll start with you. What's been the best part of the five-game heater? Uh, for me, it was the last game against the Carolina Hurricanes, uh, a team that I love to see us beat every time. Uh, in a game where the Edmonton Oilers of old and the Edmonton Oilers of the last three or four years would have probably come out a little bit flatter than what we saw yesterday. Uh, a really great effort, put their foot on the throat, and then just kept going. And made Brindamore come out with one of the better uh, sound bites that I've heard in a long time, saying that they were going to lose by 50 to nothing. That would have been awesome if they, the others would have scored 50. Mm-hmm. Would have been something. You, never see, you don't see that. Especially if the coach called it ahead of time and then was like, yeah, it happened. You could probably get him uh, in trouble for that. That's true, actually. There would be mm-hmm. some collusion That's there. That's 41 probably. games. What do you think, uh, Liam? Best part of the five-game heater? Uh, Zach Hyman scoring a hat-trick last game. Hello. Pretty epic. And then editor and Lee finally deleting the tweet. <laughs> Did they? That is, Which yeah, they was, did actually do it. They it took it. pointless two hat tricks in two and a half weeks, but we got there. Got Zach us. Hyman needs twenty-two goals to have one hundred mm. goals for the Edmonton Oilers. And we're all in agreement. We're going to post that every single time Zach scores a goal. Now, you got oh it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, you got to make sure. Let's Sometimes I'm like, when people get dragged like that for a bad take, I feel bad. But that guy's whole bit is yeah. saying <laughs> outlandish, dumb ground, shit. Because yeah. he said he doubled down again yesterday. Yeah, like you clearly want the smoke, what buddy. Did you say? Yesterday. It's, and it's not even it's not even a personal name. It's editor and leaf. Yeah, so it's, it's not like some dude with a picture of like him and his kids. And I feel bad. I don't feel bad about this one. What at they all. say yesterday? It just kept going about the Bunting being better than him and coming in and replacing him. Which Bunting, Bunting is now is gone. Not even there. Yeah, but they just that, that, that doesn't matter to them. It's just the narrative. Ooh, Liam's that they looking need. for it. Liam's fired He's up. Hunting. Look at him. He's hunting this one. Michael Bunting is what I looked up. Oh, <laughs> I wanted to see how many goals he had with the Leafs. He was a suitable replacement because he wasn't making as much money, oh, which is which is what happened because they didn't keep him. But then they didn't hold on to him. Yeah, mm-hmm. twenty three goals last season. Michael Bunting, Zach Hyman had thirty six. Zach got Hyman 50. has more points than Austin Matthews this year. Yeah, boy, Rick, best part of the five game heater. Honestly, it's been everything. At the beginning of the year, during the whole slide and whatnot, everything was going wrong. There was not a, a positive part of the game out there. Luck. Offense, neutral zone, defense, goaltending, PK, power play, didn't really matter. Nothing was going right. Now, it seems everything's back on track and everything's going right. Um, It's not perfect, but it's never expected to be perfect, but they are back to being where they're supposed to be in every aspect of the game. Every aspect? Yeah, Yeah. I mean, you know, over this five-game heater, you're probably right. There's not a lot to dislike here. They've been, you know... Preventing chances, they've been. I not shouldn't perfect. Even, right? I, yeah, gonna be, I shouldn't even say preventing chances. They have cut out a lot of the grade A mistakes, though, and yeah. that's that's encouraging, right? Yeah, um, we don't have, we haven't had like three and four breakaways a game. Yeah, it just hasn't happened. Like, They're still happening, but it's not happening. Even two on ones aren't like happening every period. Uh, BM best part of the five game winning streak. How can nobody say? I've got two. Can I say two? <sighs> one of those probably going to be the one I want to say, but you go. Probably not. Okay. Warren Fogle scoring a fucking breakaway. <laughs> okay, goal. you're right. I did not have that one. The best Come on. part of the winning streak. He, he is was now for two thousand, <laughs> and now he's one for two thousand and one. Number two, TNT playing the Gretzky win video we post on Twitter. Oh, yeah. oh my god, that was great. It is fun whenever we get the little nod from a big national broadcaster. It like sucks that. that Canadians couldn't see it though. I know. Can we no. talk to them about covering the Oilers as a as a whole from going forward? Well, like, we'll obviously show. Uh, Sportsnet's done here, right? Right. So someone's got to well, come show. He's getting that money. Yeah. So someone's got to come in and grab it. Yep. Can we just sell our rights to our games to TNT directly? Well, like Dan made a point earlier that quote from Rod Rendemore being like, "Oh, we're gonna lose fifty. Like we don't get any of that no. on the bench. 
no. an interview with Stop. a coach during the game? That's a very milk? American thing. Yeah. Like if, if Louie picks things up between the benches, he'll talk about it, but we don't get to talk to the coach. And even then making. he keeps that tight lipped because he's worried about no, letting stuff the, out there. Yeah. The, 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 the player code. The code, yeah. Um, even like the intermissions on those TNT broadcasts, if you ever get a chance to like sneak in and watch them, if you can figure out a way how, or if you're in the States, in Canada, everything feels so pre-produced. It is like, you know, the host being like, hey, give us this take. And then a graphic pops up while they're ends, right? The TNT broadcast is very much like, okay, we got four guys that are very interesting here. Let's Let's wind, let's wind them up and action. And then they just shoot the shit. It's great. Well, and and to that point, uh, Paul Bissonnette went off on, on hitting uh, during our broadcast and the Luke Hughes hit, and then they cut him off. What was his point? He was just saying that uh, to break it down, it was, yeah, minor hockey. They just don't teach him enough. And we keep rolling it back further and further. Yeah, and the players what are, you, are like younger. 15, 16 now by the time you learn how to Yeah, hit. he said he was taking, he was taking a week long camp in the summer to learn how to get hit. It was like, it was about hitting. So I for remember, a week, they'd worked on just hitting. This way, when you got to the game, you knew what you had to take care of. I remember when, got, when I was going into Pee Wee. Like, of course. This that was hit. That was, that was the move for us. That yeah. was at our age. Pee Wee was actual contact. Adam was like a little bit of you contact here and there, but there Pee Wee was when you, you could actually hit. started. I remember yeah. going to. I went to a um, a double A camp or something like that in the summer leading into Pee Wee, and they spent the first two days learning body contact. Yeah, whether it was mid ice against the boards, all that stuff. Yeah. Here's my like thing. Fundamentals of playing yes, hockey. You need to learn how to be hit. I, I talked about this with John Bucci Gross and Colby Cohn did it on DFO Live. It's a great hit if you want to go uh, check it out. There's my shameless plug. Um, and we talked about, and Bucci was actually on my side with this and against Biz, where it's like, okay, they were playing the clip of Luke Hughes getting blown up, right? Mm-hmm. And Biz was like, that's because they aren't teaching them. Okay, but that is true for like the 0.05%, 0.01% of kids who eventually make it to the NHL, right? And have to deal with that into their 20s, never mind, like, on a consistent basis. The other side of it, and I think the point is, there are probably, it's probably higher than 0.05% kids who have who have had to de- deal with concussions when they're 12 years old because sure. they're 85 pounds and have to go up against a kid who hit puberty a year ago and is going to steamroll you. And, like, mm-hmm. no matter how well you learn how to l- take body kind of whatever, it's kind of pointless to teach kids when there's that big of a gap. Like, Bantam, I, I get behind that because everyone's a little bit closer to the same playing field. Midget, sure. But when it's Pewee, man, there's still such a discrepancy there. But, the, like but you can take you out, you can take out open ice hits and you can have just rub outs along yep, the board totally. and learn how to do that. You learn how to protect yourself along the boards, which is really the biggest issue. Most of these hits that are getting scary and bad aren't necessarily open ice Scott Stevens on Paul Correa's. <laughs> they're, you know, they're along the boards where a guy holds up three feet, four feet away from the boards, leaves himself in a terrible position yeah. and ends up eating the dasher because he put himself in a bad that's spot. That's been a thing that's come into the NHL a lot over the last couple of years where people will just post up two, three feet instead of going right into the boards and absorbing it. They want yeah. to do like... The reverse stand, hit or whatever. Stand in the area get, where you can't hit me because I'm yeah, in a dangerous spot. Like, I liked Luke Gazdick's point on Sportsnet. Oh, and he guessed Luke Gazdick. He's mm-hmm. on this week. He just kind of said, and I'm paraphrasing, he's like, Listen, you got to be aware of who's on the ice too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that too. And again, it's weird to me that it got turned into a conversation about like minor hockey and being taught when to hit. Luke Hughes has been playing college hockey for like three years. Dude, if you can't learn to take a hit in that time span, you're just not looking out for yourself. How like, many times is he a player of his caliber getting hit in that? Twice spot? this season. He, that, but in, in college he's hockey, college, he's, he's in, probably in way better than everybody. He's, yep. so, he's so much better, right? Like. Yeah. They're not getting it's kind of like why did not why did Yak not know how to play defense because his whole way growing up he was that damn good <laughs> offensively he didn't have to learn and then when he came to the NHL he had to learn like pronto and it's too yeah. much to take in at once same thing when it comes to hitting yeah. it's just and I and I like I think that the last thing for me is just the fact that like we keep rolling it back and the conversation then ends and that's the part that bugs me and I you know you saw it with Biz making his point the broadcast cuts away the we're not talking about this stuff enough and it's just kind of quiet and then somebody's going to get decked and killed and then we're going to take hitting out of the game but that's by people who are like not involved in hockey starting to get involved in hockey that's why it takes me and this is completely sidetracked but this is when you know all fan all new fans are good fans i don't agree with that because i don't think you lose you lose some of the uh, of the of the game right so you have all these people in the government's making these decisions who have zero to do with hockey 
Never played. They didn't like had nothing, but they're watching this and going, nope, you have to do this now. Well, you don't know. You have not been there. You mm-hmm. need to go through those steps in order to understand it. And that's oh, where right. I think the conversation just has to yeah. continue. Um, we're going to step aside, take a quick break. When we come back, the carbon tax up next on it. No, <laughs> we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna keep it away from that. Um, there is an update. Oh. His plane, is this what it is? From John Morrissey. Oh, John Morrissey has an update? Morrissey. Oh, no. Shh. Holy crap. He said, sources. Holy shit. Shohei Otani is en route to Toronto today. And my wow. buddy Dylan Cardinal, who is tracking what the plane, the plane has officially began its descent into Toronto. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Holy shit. John Morosi tweeted that. Why do that. you need your buddy? I'm watching it right here, man. <laughs> oh, you got it? Of course I do. I've been watching this plane all fucking day. Look, if you weren't excited, you can't be getting more excited. Now, like nine o'clock this morning, when everyone first out heard about the plane and everything got, that's when it was done. We should have been jacked up at that point. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Shohei Otani could be a Toronto Blue Jay. That means I have to order a jersey today. I have three relatives that aren't on Twitter, and I promised them I would continue to hit them with updates. So don't mind me while I text my dad and others. By the way, if you're listening to this, David Quadrelli, and I know you are, you are not allowed to fucking cheer for Shohei Otani as a Toronto Blue Jay. The amount of shit you doled out about the Seattle Mariners over the last handful of years, you're not welcome here. What was he saying? Oh, well, when the Jays went up against the Mariners in the playoffs. Oh, he was he a Mariners guy? He's, he's, Mariners probably, guy. he's oh. probably not even a fan. Oh, oh my. The Mariners. Oh, yeah, he pretends he's not a fan. Well, those West Coast fans are only fans when things are good and then things go badly. Ooh. Um, okay, so Morosi says at the end of the tweet, sorry, Liam, I totally bulldozed you there. <laughs> but he says, at this hour, Otani does not have a signed agreement with any MLB team. Of course, they're going to video it. He's going <laughs> to sign it on he's camera. He's going to sign it on camera fucking rights, man. It's showtime, yeah, baby. Yeah, come on. They're not... That's not been fucking pre-signed. Tyler, we got to refresh our Otani boy jerseys. <laughs> They're uh, going to sign it from the, <laughs> the on like the back of a tractor on Rogers Field. You know what I need to see? Right now, he's got a hard hat on. Yeah. I need to see a picture of Shohei walking off the PJ. Uh, real life listeners will enjoy this interaction I've just had. Uh, I sent my dad a screenshot of that Morosi tweet saying that Shohei is on route to Toronto. But, uh, my dad's response, who knows? <laughs> Dad, sure dad's been hurt before yeah he knows he's got uh, some scar tissue yeah wow okay uh my we got really derailed there yeah my biggest part of this five game heater let's be honest guys Stuart skinner has a 940 something safe percentage if you think that's more important than warren fogel <laughs> scoring on a breakaway <laughs> You are out of your mind. But it goes hand in like, hand with playing better in your defense. They play, well, you also, you know what? And you can't, to Tyler's point, you can't say that they're only playing bad teams here. Who have they played? Carolina. Carolina, Washington, Vegas, Anaheim, um, and I don't remember the fifth one. Seattle? Se- uh, no. Winnipeg. Winnipeg. Winnipeg, yeah, yeah. Right. And he was very good against Winnipeg. He, was, he out-dueled Connor Hellebuck. Yeah, Winnipeg. he did. He did. Yeah, those are it. Four really good teams. Stomped the Carolina yeah. Hurricanes. I know the boys put up six, but still, he only allowed one. The, and the goal he allowed in that game, what are you going to do? Three on yeah. one. What are you going to do? he almost had it. He did. Uh, the Vegas game is the only one in that stretch where he wasn't at his best. But Those also, two goals in the third were tough. <laughs> the th- I think it was the third one is the one I would have liked him to have him to ha- for him to have it back. We'll cut that. And then um, <laughs> we won. <laughs> and then the fourth one is just like that tip from Cole is like, yeah, why is no there's nothing he can do. That guy. So he's he's been unbelievable. And the reason why the Oilers probably aren't as active in the goalie market as maybe they were two well, weeks ago. We're going to talk about that a little bit later on. Just quickly, okay. some numbers at five on five over the course of this five game winning streak. No team has prevented scoring chances against at five on five better than the Edmonton Oilers. Shots against per 60 at five on five. The Oilers have the eighth best mark in major in Major League Baseball <laughs> in the NHL. You can tell I got Shohei on the brain today, folks. I want to show Ronto. So they have cleaned things up a little bit. And one of the reasons why... <laughs> outside of the offices, outside of our studio is going nuts too. Yeah. Um, oh my God. We've got Shohei fever at the office today. <laughs> we do. And a uh, little tease here. There may be a shirt dropping when this thing goes Probably down as well on we'll nationgear.ca. Um, there. All the idea people are sitting in here. L- let's give some credit to Matthias Ekholm and Evan Bouchard. And that's right. a pairing that really struggled early in the season. Ekholm is looking healthy now, BM, and Bouchard has cut out the grade A mistakes. That so, so the thing with I want to start with that home because this is what I said on the lowdown with low tide yesterday. He looks like the guy we acquired at the deadline. 
you know, he missed the preseason and training camp. He had some mm-hmm. kind of injury. We all, we should have known it was going to take him a minute to get up to speed. And now he's back there it and would- he looks like the vacuum he was for us down the stretch last year. Then he's also adding the offensive flair because Paul Coffey's got a little mojo in the boys right now. <laughs> the goal he up. scored the other night was a great play. Yeah, that was... Was, Drove to the far yeah. crease. McDavid, ridiculous. Hit him. Tap in goal. See, that's great, though, because they're forcing the other team to really pay attention to how our players are moving in the defensive zone. If They, can, they can't just stand there all static-like, expecting us to stand along the perimeter. Someone has to watch uh, Ekholm and probably swap it off halfway down and change your coverage, and you one little mistake, you're wide open on the doorstep for it. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of movement now in the offensive zone, which is... Very difficult to play against when you kind of play almost positionless too. It's kind mm-hmm. of like basketball, yeah, you've right? Seen like, the way yeah. these guys can rotate with a puck, yeah, cycle the puck along the blue line. They're very confident. It's impressive. Shout out, Mark Stewart. Um, hey, the PK, PK is, is I think, solid. I think it's the best PK in the NHL over this five game heater. And again, using that as a benchmark is a little off because. Obviously, games. the numbers are going to be good. They're winning those five games, um, but still, it just shows that the Oilers are doing. I think on the surface, it's like, hey. Connor McDavid is averaging like three points a game. Okay, you're going to win a lot of games when that happens. Stuart Skinner, 943 or whatever over the five games. Yes, you're going to win a lot of games when one player is almost single-handedly producing three goals a game and a goalie is stopping 94% of the shots he faces. But the PK, the blue line, the cut down on the grade A mistakes, there, there is a lot more to it. Contributions throughout the lineup. Every Duelers last have last had team. 13 different goal scorers find the back of the net. Ryan McLeod, back-to-back uh, games with goals. Finally like, beat a goal. 28, a lot seconds, of people, 28 seconds apart. I know a lot of people were kind of shitting on him a little bit because the first goal he got was in an empty net, but like sometimes you just need that one. You need it to go. Yeah, he's, dude, he went right to the net. Just to feel the relief, the whew, one on the board. See, I don't think he felt that. Like They were given that. Had to. They were giving it to him, and he, I think he's like... He knew he had to get like that second one. The first one really means nothing. When you get the second one, yeah, I disagree. Then you're like, then you're like better. I disagree. I just think the first one is just as important, empty net or not. It you got, you got to know you but, can but, put but the puck. Personally, in he's not sitting there patting himself on the back. He's like, okay, no, no, good. No, that's no, one. I'm that's one. That. Let's, now let's get going. Just here. on the human side, though, I just think that there's like the yeah, you gripped a stick. <laughs> All right, Rick, quiz time. Rapid fire. Can you give me the 13 Oilers who have found the back of the net throughout the course of this winning streak? Go. Oh, the win- winning streak over Connor, the five game winning streak. Leon, Kane. Hyman, Clowder, uh, Fogel, Nurse, Ekholm, Boosh, uh, We kept him forever. Nice. Oh, yeah, Nuge. Three more. Three more. All forwards. Yeah, I was going to say, no more defensemen in there. Uh, Sammy. Yeah, Sam. Tony has got one. Hamlin. Is- Hamlin. Ernie? Janmark? Yanmark, there we go. Good yeah. job, everybody. <laughs> happy birthday. Yeah, Yanmark. Happy birthday, Matthias Yanmark. He had that one where, like, I talk about on the podcast a lot. I love greasy goals. And Yanmark's goal where it bounced off goalie, bounced off him in the net. Perfect. Beautiful to me. That's they don't end up on the highlight reel, but fuck are those sexy to me. Yeah. And the Oilers are scoring more greasy goals like that. They're getting to difficult areas. So they're combining some nice skill. Like, Connor walking the defenseman on Hyman's hat trick goal the other night ridiculous what can you do with that that wasn't any defense was that not the burns one or was burns the other one it might have been the other one because he yeah he walked burns brent burns and then Which handed it off like cheese yeah and then he handed it <laughs> off and slave and i don't know what slave was but he couldn't stop him two of the best defense or two really good defensemen and connor walked him like pylons so, like, there's no way there's not a plane on the or a camera on the tarmac right of course there of is. course there is going to be like I can't wait to see all CP of the angles. Or something like that. We that? are probably a handful of minutes away from seeing countless weird photos from across the building. Of Dude, Shohei TMZ, TMZ is there. Or is TMZ in Canada. Yeah, TMZ. Thank you. Thank you. Dun, dun, dun. All right. Uh, there you go. That is your delicious debate for Wendy's and the daily face-off Survivor game. Anybody still in is it? it? <laughs> no, I was no. out on day two. Day yeah, one. me too. On day one. I've never made it past day two. <laughs> I made day three as my... Uh, that's my Everest. And if you want to know just how difficult it is, 826 people were in on day one. Only 30 are remaining here heading in to what will be day four on Saturday and your chance to win Wendy's prizes. Last week, there were only seven people who survived out of the 800 plus. One of them was my brother-in-law. So congratulations to Kelly. It's funny because the first time I looked at it, I'm like, it can't be that hard. 
But it, it, knowing those numbers right there, that's yeah. insane. I also think it's kind of gotten more difficult. Um, I feel like the picks are more 50-50. <laughs> like that first week, there were some that were like layup, layup. But granted, what do oh, I yeah, know? Yeah, that's too easy. Haven't made it very far. So when Shohei Otani signs. Yeah, we'll go back go to ahead. that. Let's talk about that. Uh, how long is the contract going to be? Are we talking? How years. long can you? My well, prediction. I got twelve years. Uh, my prediction is twelve years, five hundred seventy-five million dollars. Is that the max? Ooh, mama. Yes. There's no max. No, there's no max. But Baseball. Twelve, 12 takes into what? Forty-one. Yeah. Yeah. What Fuck if this yeah. Like twenty years. They're going to sell that many jerseys tomorrow. Oh Just my kidding. god. That'll be the number one Christmas present in Canada, right? I'm buying one immediately. Yeah, it's going to be a piece of paper this oh, I wanted more news. It's going to be a Go piece ahead. of paper. If you read the one the I think you're going to read. Robert Bortuzzo traded to the Islanders for a seventh. Oh, you <laughs> rascal. You're it's gone, Bortuzzo. Bomb. The so, plane is over Kitchener, Ontario. Oh, my God. It's right there. So the Yankees are officially out of it now, right? <laughs> yes. He's, the plane is north of the border. <laughs> Everyone else is out. Uh, why were the Oilers not in on Robert Bortuzzo? Um, he's not that good. So we don't need 39. him. 39. 34. Well, Does that mean St. Louis is starting to sell off their assets? It's still? inflation, you know. I actually do think the Blues are going to probably begin some sort of a sell-off here. Mm. Anybody we want from the Blues? Listen, I know a lot of people listening to Colton Pareko. He's not the Colton Pareko. He's not Colton from before. He's not the same old Colton Pareko. And that, that deal is sizable. I don't see yeah. a D-man there that I like. Like, Justin. I'm not a big Justin Fault guy. Let's let's no. follow it down the rabbit hole. I'm thinking of the, you know, the Philip Roberg got sent to the, uh, the Condors. Mm-hmm. Thank goodness. Still the trade kind of before, before but do you like do you like moving Broberg now and keeping Kulak there or we do you go more towards what Frank was saying the other day and look at moving Kulak, bringing Broberg in there, no. figuring out the Broberg thing, mm -mm. finding yourself a seven and having money to play with. But what I if would, that doesn't work? Yes. Bang Kulak on. is two days. Why are we so negative? Because I'm being realistic. Because today on December eighth, I think your point is gonna be Brett Kulak is objectively better than Philip Broberg. You know what you got. We just, yeah, we don't know. We do not know what Broberg they is. They don't need any more experiments. I like Broberg. I think he's got a future in the NHL. I hope it's with Edmonton. But I would, if you, if they had done this over the summer, I think it would have been more acceptable. Yes, right now but you can't do it right now. In the in the shadow of what how, that what that start was, I think it's still too. Yeah, dangerous. you can't. Yeah. You, this isn't learn on the job mode. No, unfortunately for him. But again, it was a one injury away from Broberg being exactly. So like mm, two, you can hold them for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. You think Ben Gleason plays, or is he just eating popcorn? He's just popcorn. here to eat popcorn and popcorn enjoy rice. being an NHLer for a little bit. Take hey, some man. of those paychecks, of course. Yeah, got um, it. I let's dig into the Broberg thing a little bit. Um, we got the news earlier this week from Frank that his agent has permission to to go around and find a new team if he wants. It makes sense. Like seeing it at first, I think we were all a little bit like whoa, and then what I said earlier was you kind of stop and think and go. Oh, yeah, okay. Like, he probably sees that the left side is loaded still for the next couple of years. He knows playing time is going to be hard to come by. He wants a fresh start somewhere where he's going to get more opportunity. From an Oilers perspective, I think you sit there and go, yeah, hey, go out there. If you're his agent, call around. If there's a team who loves you, we'll do business with them. We're not going to hold you back from this. Um, but, again, you need to be careful not to sell low on a guy. It, that And that's what it is. If I'm... If I... I don't know what this. The Oilers need to lock them down in Bakersfield and think, what is going on? How do we have a former first round pick who can't even break into our top six right now? That's not necessarily a bad thing though, because it's not no, like it he's. A, it's not like his lack of. It's not because of his bad play. It's because there's six players ahead of him, which is also bad because he was the eighth overall pick, and the Oilers have. Yeah, but we, he's always going to be. I can't remember exactly what they said he was going to be. It was going to be like a long-term plan or whatever the hell they said. Um, that should have meant five, six years afterwards before you can like have him on your team comfortably. I know he's a number eight, but he was taken at number eight as a bit of a project because they felt like his upside was so so big. So you got to look at him almost like a late first-round pick at Tyler that time Brigham. in terms of, of, of timeline to make the team. The Toronto Blue Jays have scheduled a press conference for 6 p.m. Eastern. Who, four, who tweeted that? That's our four. friend Adam Seaborn. Oh, my God. It's happening. He won't be able to get there with rush hour. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you don't think they have a helicopter to pick him up? Do they do that in Toronto? I'm Did sure Seabs actually tweet I'm sure that? They shut down Sieb the entire. Adam Seaborn, our boy. The Jays have a presser at 6 p.m. Eastern. They're just going to do it from the airport. <laughs> He's going to get back on the plane. Think, Thank guys, I got a place to be. Shohei oh, Otani. Sorry, I got to. Is coming to Toronto. 
You gotta tell dad. Yeah, sorry, I gotta tell my dad. <laughs> this, I just also secured something that I'm very excited about. So this good day. This is again. I'm sorry because it's an Oilers podcast, and there are probably a chunk of you that could not give less of a shit about but this. Let me explain this is, why. Yeah, yeah, go. I think that I'm the person to do this. Tyler loves the Toronto Blue Jays. Yeah. As a newer fan of the Jays, and actually like really paying attention mm-hmm. and getting a, a chance to go watch Shohei play with the Angels the last couple of years, I think this is one of those situations where yes, it's going to help the Blue Jays team now and for the next handful of years, but it's also going to grow the game of baseball within this country in a massive way. Like when Vince Carter was playing for the Raptors and now you see all these kids getting drafted into the NBA that were inspired by Vince Carter playing for the Raptors. We're going to see that now in baseball as well. There'll there'll, there'll be that turn for sure. And Shohei Otani is, yeah, he's going to be one of the best hitters in baseball, he's going to be one of the best pitchers when he's back to pitching. But on a more macro level for this country, it's going to really elevate the Jays brand and just why kids should be interested in this sport. I think that's really cool cultural impact that, yeah, he's going to make the six, seven hundred million dollars and Tyler's smiling like yeah, he's like a Cheshire cat right now. But ultimately, I think that for the sports in this country, this is going to be a massive move if this actually closes. Tyler, would you agree with that? This is the most significant off-field, off-ice moment in Canadian sports history. Right? Yes, this is bigger than Kawhi. And like, Kawhi was... Like, yeah. Kawhi, well, no, but, and Kawhi didn't happen. Oh, I guess the trade here, the initial trade here, but like the re-signing didn't happen. Kawhi didn't no, that's fair. to play in Toronto. Shohei is picking to play in Toronto. Yeah, that's fair. But, but, the biggest select, but the biggest transaction before this would have been Kawhi. The one before that would have been, and I'm not sure off the top of my head, would have been hockey-related, though, obviously. And basketball and baseball are just globally larger than hockey. Therefore, it becomes a bigger deal. I think that it sets the table for something massive. I don't know necessarily if the signing is going to do it just as much as I think a season or two of Shohei doing his thing in this city and really showing people that like that skill. Because I think casual baseball fans in Canada maybe don't even necessarily understand what they have in a Shohei Otani until he starts doing you know, it. See, in yeah, that. I think he's at a point in his career where everybody knows because of the fact mm. he does play the two positions because yeah. of the fact I was just gonna he's say. so good at both. At yeah, both. Um, I think I think it's taken. I, I think you have to be very small fan to no fan to not know about. I just Shohei. want to explain it a different the, way for Oilers fans who may not be like, I don't know what you guys are talking about. Picture Connor McDavid. Mm-hmm. He is the best player on earth. Prime we all Price. agree with it. And now he's also the best goalie on earth. <laughs> and just sometimes he goes in net and he shuts the other team out and that's what he does. Mm-hmm. But with Shohei, sometimes he does both in the same game. Kind of crazy. It won't be this year. Not it, this year, of course. I, I, I just I, think it's cool too because you have a Japanese superstar in a Canadian city and now this city could dominate an American sport. Like that, hey, that we, that's the global reach. We fucking won that thing twice already. Hey, listen. But, but I'm saying... The Jays have more championships since 1992 than the, than the, the fucking LA Dodgers. Dodgers do. Hell yeah. All right. Uh, quickly, I want to tell everybody about a new collection hitting Nation Gear. It is our Let's Varsity go. Collection. Toronto. Br- bring on the team spirit. Yeah, you know what? It might be a, a bit of a double launch day. <laughs> First off, the Varsity Collection is dope. You can go check it out now, nationgear.ca. There's this sleek, like... O.N. crew neck sweater. It looks very, very cool. And this off-white Oilers Nation hat. They both look awesome. Check it out now. Also, yeah, there, there may be a show Ronto uh, coming up at some point as well. So keep it locked on nationgear.ca. Liam, let's get to who delivered for today. It's delivered by our friends at DoorDash. Ding dong. Ding dong. For a limited time, our Canadian listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more. When you download the DoorDash app and enter the code NATION25, that's 25% off, up to a $10 value, and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter the code NATION25. Tyler, I just got some news. I want to. I wish I could push every button on the roadcaster all at the same time. Is that your who delivered? Is life? Uh, Dan, who delivered for you? Uh, I, I got to give it to Stu Skinner. Uh, his 
his, uh, just like the confidence, I think Tyler, you, you posted about it or mentioned it yeah. on a show, like that confidence in that Carolina game, he, he had swagger, which I don't think we've seen from him this year and even into last year. So it's, uh, it, for me, it's going to be Stewie giving us uh, a great, great bunch of efforts here in this win streak. Fantastic. Yeah, he's been very good. Who delivered for DoorDash for me? Just on Stu for a sec. The thing I really liked about his last game against Carolina he was so quiet in the net, mm. square to the shooter, next to no rebounds, glove was no dialed dramatics. in. Yep. It was rock solid goaltending. But everything is working. That's why everything works. Everything so was working. Uh, Liam, who you got? Who delivered? Who delivered? Ross Atkins. Shohei's plane is well, going down in Toronto. Yeah, Ross Atkins did. Deliver. Were you going to say landing? Landing. Mm-hmm. Sorry, careful how you say that. Yeah, my apologies. <laughs> going down. Did you not hear what was said outside that door? <laughs> Don't say stuff. I'm like just. That. I was like, it's going down like the Kesha song. I'm yelling timber. Come on. <laughs> I'll say McLeod. Um, big Bang goal. Look live watching the play. Are you no down. longer trying to run him out of town? I never run him out of town. Oh, right. Rick, <laughs> Jesus! And you were doing your old thing on Twitter about like no room on the bandwagon for people who That's jumped true. off. 100%. We had to. We had to talk you off a ledge like a month ago, bro. Yeah, and I said I was not losing anything. I was not getting off the bandwagon, <laughs> but mentally I was I was drained. <laughs> and everything was going wrong. He was down and stole my well, cold performer of the week. Every ah, okay. <laughs> and I was always one hundred percent on the playoffs. You stole my cold performer time. Yep, that was big. <laughs> Two big balls. Uh-huh. <laughs> Holy moly. This is the most real life ONR podcast I've ever been a Listen, part of my entire combo. life. I don't understand. With a little Blue Jays Nation. <laughs> yeah. We've We're doing so some cross mo- promo for the Blue Jays show. Nation radio. Uh, there is a new episode of Blue Jays Nation Radio that dropped this morning, largely irrelevant now. Are you going to do an emergency one? Yeah, probably. Can um, I be on it? Yeah, if we do it at the office, I mean, no matter where we do it, actually, yeah, we could definitely Please? do something. Thank you. Okay, um, let's dig into. I feel oh, it's like Rick. I made Rick a fair here. point about Shohei's impact on Canadian baseball, and you just let me hang there. <laughs> no, I thought it was a good point. I'd nothing to add. Rick. <laughs> oh, it's Boosh. He's got a nine-game point streak, doesn't yeah, he? Not? Twelve points in nine games. Let's go. Yeah, he's a he's a massive part of this team. And you know, what? I'm going to have a lot of fun having uh, near the end of this year when both Boosh and Nurse are <laughs> mentioned in. Not the top three, but mentioned in Norris candidate. There's going to be one guy in this office. So I, he might just sit in his office the whole time when he starts yeah, talking it's about gonna that. Be a, it's gonna but be they're tough. both going to get mentioned in it. And it's going to sit back with a smile on your face. BM, who delivered? Flighttrader24.com. <laughs> this fucking Sucking website. There. This plane is now being tracked by 20,000 people live. <laughs> <laughs> I have had this thing me. open all day just because, first of all, I find it fascinating how many planes are just above us at all times. Terrifying. It is wild. Chem trails. Over over by like over on the west coast. Just is ridiculous. You couldn't see the ground. I was like, what? And is I happening? know that these are not to scale, obviously, or else these are <laughs> massive fucking planes. <laughs> but still, the point that there's all these airplanes just dipping and diving around us with helicopters mixed in, and some of them look like spy planes. Are they drones? What's going on there's here? Something in there. Uh, plane landed, by the way. So, flighttrader24.com. <laughs> You've been delivering all day for the entire country of Canada. Oh. I d- and I'm a big fan of how upset some people below the border are going to get. Yep. Just for that, just to your point there, Bag Milk, uh, <laughs> the most flights in one day is 134,000 flights operated in one single day with 20,000 flying over North America at, at the same time. 20,000 planes. That's insane. Like, no. I don't. I, I don't accept that. I'll be taking the bus from now on. <laughs> yeah, what if they all fell down? It at the really same time? is. Well, yeah, that would was you January first, two thousand. You'd be <laughs> yeah. watching them all go down on flight tracker. <laughs> oh no! All my yellow planes turn red. Adam Seaborn's tweet, which was sent out ten minutes ago, has five hundred retweets already, and a hundred in ten minutes, and a hundred and two thousand impressions. My boy Seabs, though, he's dialed in. Seaborn, can you drop a link to Owen every day, just like right below that? <laughs> yeah. like more here. <laughs> this is Otani every day. Do we have a Kennedy's quote game today? We do. I hope so. All right, well, we're going to step aside for a quick break, everybody. When we come back, we'll have Kennedy here for her quote game. All right, welcome back into the pod. It is time for Kennedy's quote game, which is brought to you by our favorite pre and post game spot in Edmonton, Greta. They got games, they got beer, they got booze, they got great food as well. Everything is happening at Greta. After a big win, it's your spot. Getting ready to head down to the game, it is your spot. 
And this weekend, it may be the spot to celebrate Shohei. Hello. Kennedy's here with the quote game. We got six quotes <laughs> lined up. We and swear this is an Oilers podcast, by the way. Today it is not. This is show and our radio. We cover sports. Yeah. Uh, all right, Kennedy, we got six. Let's fly through this thing because Shohei Otani could be signing it any minute. Any minute. Okay, let's go. Uh, number one, can you believe it? The Edmonton Oilers won a hockey game last night. Hmm. I'm rusty. I haven't played this in like a few that weeks, could, I think. And like that one's very generic. I. Mm, that's a tough one. Yeah. yeah. I think I nailed it. Well, I was a healthy scratch last week, so I had, to, I had time to look. <laughs> oh, <laughs> aggression. Mm-hmm. I like it. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, number two. Well, the first thing is the jersey toss. Well, the first thing is the jersey toss. Uh, number three, you Ooh. need to stay away from the luch type of contracts. Number four, you don't throw a pizza up the middle when you're on a PTO. <laughs> Number five, sometimes you have to have a hard conversation at work, Gary. <laughs> what? And they said Gary at the end. Gary. No, oh, I'm too Bob. Yeah. Um, Number six, he was born in a hospital, I believe. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. I don't know who that one is. Locked him all in. Six for six today, I think. Zero. I'm an O for today. I have no confidence in any of these. I feel rusty. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm upset. You got Otani on the mind. I'm, yeah. I'm thinking Shohei. You thought you wrote down Shohei for every answer, didn't you? Um, my shoner is <laughs> showing. My shoner. <laughs> All right, let's uh, get through our results. Okay, number one, the quote was, "Can you believe it? The Edmonton Oilers won a hockey game last night." BM, I'll start with you. I said it was me. I said Rick. I said Tyler. I said myself. I have Liam. And here's the quote. Together, huddled together. Chris is on my lap. Share the warmth. Evan's on Chris's lap. It's nice. It's really nice. Boys, can you believe it? Wow. The Edmonton Oilers won a hockey game last night. Wow. Yeah, we're in the darkness. Very young in the, the old is, clip. It's very entertaining. Cam was on this podcast. That is a, so this Chris is like, and Evan. That is a coom and a Chris oh, and an Evan. God. The wow, Evan! When did Evan work here? That was uh, that was before me. Nineteen eighty. That was like six, seven years ago. Yeah, that would have been twenty eighteen, twenty nineteen. You went way back. Oh, yeah. That was the that was oh, still yeah. during the no, not the decade, not quite, but man. Okay, good for you. That's gonna be like season one, season two. Yeah. Throwback uh, number two. Well, the first thing is the jersey toss. BM. Dan. I said Dan. I said BM. I said BM. I have me by default. I know it's not me. Here's a quote. A lot going on in that third period. Uh, a lot of negativity. What stood out to you from Tuesday's loss? Well, the the first thing has to be the jersey toss. That's fair. Is that Dan? It was yeah. Dan. It was a different era of Dan. It was deeper then. All of a sudden, old bag milk's two for two on the OG Oilers <laughs> Nation radio takes. Hello. Hello. Number three. Number three. So, am Eat. I even on this one? Wait. <laughs> we'll see. Just, just wait. You'll see. It. It's actually Shohei. Anyways, number three. Uh, you just stay away from the luch type co- of contracts. I got Rick. I guessed Liam. I said Rick. Rick. Me. I would only call him Mr. Yes. Luchy. Still right there. And exactly, and that's where that's where I'm coming from, right? Like, you don't want to get involved with that. You need to stay away from the luch type contracts. The giveaway there is that Rick called him luch. I don't think yeah. any of us would have call him luch. No. See, I was trying. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, I suppose. heard you say luch before. Okay. So. Yeah, Rick's a very, uh, you're more likely than anybody to go nickname, I think. Yeah, uh, some of them for sure. Yeah. Hey, noted. There's certain words out there, and wait, just like the same with you, BM. There's certain things out there that you're like, nah, that's him. Yeah. Uh, number four, you don't throw a pizza up the middle when you're on a PTO. I s- oh. Liam? I said bag milk. I said BM too. BM? I have BM. There's the quote. <laughs> he's like on his ELC. He's yeah. trying to. He's you trying don't, to extend. You don't throw pizza up the middle when you're on a PTO. You wow. Tyler. Pizza Surprise. pie. Tyler. I do have leftover pizza for lunch. I might have it tonight. Out of point. Alrighty, number five. Sometimes you have to have a hard conversation at work, Gary. Who'd we all put down? I had Tyler, but now I don't feel confident. I said Tyler as well. I said Dan. Dan. I have BM. There's a quote. Well, if we wait one more year, think about the revenue and all the other all the other BS that comes with it. Sometimes you just got to have a hard conversation at work. Gary? I 
So Tyler. Gary. Oh, oh now my next <laughs> one's screwed too. Damn well it. Done. I don't remember saying that 20 years ago. <laughs> True. 2013. Um, already number six. This is, could be anybody. He was born in a hospital, I believe. Liam? That's so stupid. I'm saying me. I said Liam. I said Liam. I have Liam. I said Liam. There it is. There it is. Hey, it was anyways. 15 yeah. years in the league? Well, 2008. When's he born? We so got some video Remchak Liam math going on When's here. He, so born? he was born in a hospital, I believe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that's, an all, that's an all-time Liam quote. Happy I say that. Two for uh, six, I'll take it. Out of yeah. me, boys, what are we at? Where are we at? Well, two I for Tyler six. Tyler and I have the same answer, so I also went for two for six. Two, two. for six? Wow. We should really... 50-50, uh, okay. three, three for six, roll ah, yeah. How long have we been Bagman doing this game it. for now? Probably a few months. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm building out a spreadsheet to see how aggregate, 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 who does well, but I also don't want to. Uh, so it's not began yet. I don't know. But I have you a feeling know. I know who. Yeah, I definitely have the okay. highest record. Yeah. I don't know, BM's kind of up there too. It ain't me. I am not up there. Well, thanks boys. Good job, Kennedy. Thank you, Kennedy. There you go. Kennedy's Quote Game brought to you by Greta this weekend, whether you're celebrating a big dub or you're celebrating a big signing. Do we have a show today? Update? No, Do we no have update. an update? Game today. Go down to Greta. Have yourself something to eat and drink. Pop on over to the, oh, the old barn. Yep. Go watch the boys. Greta, Edda, Edda. I, I'm going to scour Twitter for a picture of this handsome gentleman. Uh, Brett Holden, who works for us here at Nation mm-hmm. HQ, is he's keeping track of ticket prices for the home opener. Mm-hmm. And I think this one is very interesting. In the span of only today, up in the 500 levels. High as you can get at Rogers. You're sitting in space. They've moved from $23 to $120 per ticket. And it was wow. like 94, like three hours ago, because I saw that tweet yeah. from like a couple hours ago. Oh, my yeah. God. Rusty the Reckless Optimist, our good old pal, whose birthday is today, I believe. So birthday Happy birthday, Rusty. Rusty. Tweeted at 2.37 p.m., which was two minutes ago, I'm fully expecting today's episode of the O&R podcast to be an Otani Watch podcast. <laughs> well, I hope you've enjoyed it so far. <laughs> Expectations exceeded. <laughs> yes. Okay, well then let's Got talk A little bit sports. of everything in here. Let's talk some others. Big game tonight. First Minnesota off. Minnesota Wild. Yeah. Going for the six in a row. Yep. What I hope that the Oilers do is just like they did against Carolina the other day. Remember that the Wild embarrassed them in their last meeting. I want to see another start like that. Pedal to the floor. And I know I'm not going to probably get two goals in the opening minute. But pedal mm. to the floor for full 60. Well, I wanted to talk about that a little bit in what impressed me or what was the best part of the five-game winning streak. That first 41 seconds kind of was, if we're being honest. Like, how many times have we seen the others come out flat, flat, flat in big games? For years. In situations like that. Years. Almost a decade, man. And to see them coming off a break at a point where it's like, okay, can they keep the momentum going? My key to victory was Stuart Skinner standing on his head in the first 10 minutes because my brain is trained to think the Oilers will come out flat. He actually did that because he was so damn bored. He was just trying yeah. to do something. He was yeah. doing handstands, <laughs> but no one's looking down there because the puck is in there. Right there. That start end. was incredible. And if you can do that again, and if that can become a trait of this team moving forward, oh my God, will they be? at another level yeah they they got a they've actually a pretty good start throughout the year right like mm-hmm. you look back at like that yeah, three game losing one shot would had. end up in the net and it they, would they just they just derail it. themselves by erasing their own leads because they haven't been able to hold it so tonight again they need to come out and i agree bm like prove that that game against minnesota back in october whenever it was was not who this team actually is and I don't think they were. I think that game was just... That was the signature Evan Bouchard game, if we all remember. Mm-hmm. So, uh, for me, again, I said this for the Carolina <laughs> game. Signature in the, in the opposite <laughs> not, way of where he's at right not, now. Not a good way, yeah. So, I think the others need to... They need to pummel him. Like, score score five goals again. Special like, teams need crazy, to be dialed in. But they've done it three games in a row now where they've scored five goals. But that's just it. Their biggest obstacle is not another team. Their biggest obstacle is themselves. There's three to four to five teams out there that should be able to play with them. The rest of them should not have a chance if they go in there and play their game their way. They're doing it right now. They're make they're doing their best to make up for the beginning. And I, I have video of Shohei Otani in the in the Toronto airport. Is it this one? Yeah. Yeah. If that's legit, I don't know if it is. <laughs> well, of course he's there. I like how Rick was just making a really good point. <laughs> oh, listen, this is... <laughs> This is, this just, is bigger than myself. 
the this Shohei is, this watch is a global kicks issue. In again. Yeah. This is a so global what issue. What say about Oilers? <laughs> I really hope the Oilers win tonight. Yep. They will. <laughs> they will. This team is this team is different right now. I'm gonna go outside do a shotgun for Shohei. People were really upset at our last episode because we had nothing to talk about because it was in the middle of that lull and we were just kind of spitting. And now Listen, we are good. talking. Listen, I will send you pictures of my Shoner. It is <laughs> two and a half inches of fury. <laughs> And I will Jays. also send you a refund on this podcast. Blue Jays today has four thousand over four thousand people watching them live. Just to they're just riffing, just That's waiting. Yeah, like everyone's just waiting for this. I don't know why everyone's just not taking a break. They know it's coming at four o'clock, four o'clock hour time. They've already announced the, the press conference. Well, they haven't. Seaborn sent it out and then said rumor mill's hot. <laughs> Classic Seabs. Uh, so is it happening? Or yeah, who knows? He's in Toronto, though. He's there. Yeah, it's hot. Like, you don't fly to Toronto unless you're signing in Toronto, right? right. Is there a Drake concert tonight? No, then, yeah, for sure. What a crazy... Drake should be giving him a concert at the airport. He might be right now. He may have... He should walk out to Celine Dion singing, Mm. and then it get... He, like, continues on the weekends there. Gradually, Avril Lavigne shows up. (laughs) What is... Eventually, (laughs) Drake. Right before he walks in the... finale. Sorry, Rick. Justin Bieber. And then Austin, Ooh. you can see Justin Bieber push Austin Matthews to the side and say, This Welcome is my new best friend. Austin, I got a new guy now, and it's showtime, baby. What is the first Drake bar that involves Otani? I'm thinking something like... It's going to say showtime. Uh, I got Toronto in me. No, it's gonna I'll say always Show choose Ronto. the six like Otani. <laughs> yeah, that that works. works. He's going to have a show Ronto line in there after he sees our shirt. And he'll rock it at a concert. Fucking right. Don't you have his address? Send him, st- send him yeah, some stuff. Yeah, just don't lob it over the fence. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to you, Aubrey. Thanks yep. for the plug. See, if you put Aubrey on there, he'd be like, oh, this person knows me. It's not the Drake thing. This is yeah. personal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put Jimmy on there. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, Degrassi fan. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, let's get to Hot and Cold Performers. It is brought to you by Alberta Blue Cross. There's only one thing better than sitting around sharing memories, and it's making new ones. Alberta Blue Cross and their fantastic travel insurance. They've got you covered no matter where your travel takes you. ab.bluecross.ca slash travel. Hey, hey, maybe your travel is taking you to Phoenix in February with us on the latest Nation Vacation. Head to nationgear.ca now and give the gift of a Nation Vacation this holiday season. For just $19.99, you can send your favorite fan on the trip of a lifetime to Arizona with the Oilers Nation crew February 18th to 20th. Flights, hotel, hockey, and the time of their life included. Maybe you're already in Phoenix. Maybe you're somewhere else and you go, I want to hang out with the Oilers Nation crew and go to Mullet Arena with the guys. Well, we're now offering a no-flight option for $9.99. If you want to book your own flights, you can still join us down in Phoenix. I bet Shohei is using Alberta Blue Cross to get here. Probably. Of course. Probably. When we're in the air, do you think there will be 3,000 people watching our flight? Yeah. Probably. At least. Mm-hmm. Probably. All right. Hot and cold performers. BM has his buttons ready to go. As I'm ready for you, boys. As we do, we will start with our veggies, and I will go down to the other side of the room and hit up Dan for his cold performer. Uh, my cold performer, I don't know. I, I was going to do one. I had it locked and loaded, but now I'm kind of backing off because I don't want to be too negative right now. I think it's a great time to be an Edmonton Oilers fan. We're back in the win column, so I'm not going to do it. I'm going to defer and not take a cold performer of the week this week. Too positive. I actually kind of dig that. They are Liam? just fucking yeah, ass I'll, right I'll, now. I'll, I'll gladly give one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, waking up, I think it was yesterday, and just seeing the snow was oh. not a good surprise. <laughs> and on top, how of is that, it a surprise? It's December something. Because I just didn't. I don't know. I just and also that's so unexpected. Not considered snow for us. It was. There was a lot of snow yesterday morning. I wouldn't say I a lot. Oh, there was a lot of snow. Trust me, I saw it. And also, it took me two and a half hours to get back from Pinocchio the other day because of the weather. So, shout out weather. I'm upset. Goddamn right. I did probably 10 minutes on Better Late Than Never on Wednesday about how happy I was that there was no snow, only to go to bed and wake up to snow. Yeah, wasn't in the forecast. Didn't age well. BM, cold performer. My cold performer of uh, the week probably is this podcast, to be honest. A little disjointed, a little shitty, um, a arguably day. distracted. We had one today. It's I wonder like, why. I mean, if you're yeah. a big fan of O&R, and like, this is something you look forward to on a Friday afternoon, you're like, the boys are going to break down the Minnesota Wild game tonight, and they're going to have things and topics and to-dos and all that. 
this one wasn't for you, and I apologize. So I'm going to give all of us, well, specifically a few of us, <laughs> the cold performer of the week. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Even ONE today had a lot of Otani, and Jay and, and I played a happen. flag game live on the air, uh, which yeah. probably wasn't great content. Content has been great today. Uh, Rick, cold performer. Well, this week I've been an Uber guy. I've had my Jeep in getting the clutch fixed, so I've been taking Ubers everywhere. Mm -hmm. And this is nothing bad against them, but it's just some place where they can uh, improve. you got to be a little more proactive in your driving, maybe a little more aggressive. You're driving down the right-hand side of Jasper Ave. You know there's buses. You know there's cars coming out. Stick out of that lane. You're in the left lane, but you know there's a left-hand turn coming up, and a lot of cars hit that lane. Then that, that turn lane pushes the left lane back. Sometimes you got to kick it over to the right. you got to know where you're going. you got to know how to uh, handle the traffic very well. That's all. I can't believe it! That's a hot performance. <laughs> Why are you the way that you are? I hate so much about the things that you choose to be. I'm rewatching The Office again. Yeah. I gotta get And too. if you haven't seen it in a while, just some of the early seasons, like I'm so, on season two right now, are just so fucking funny. That show was that. so good. Anyway. Uh, my cold performer of the week, it kind of touched on a little bit there by Rick, but I'm just going to say, Every year we get our first snowfall, and every year the roads are a disaster. Even if it's not that bad, it's a shit show out there. People, you know what this is like. You were driving on these roads seven months ago in the winter. It's the same thing. My cold performer are the people who it snows a little, maybe the roads get a hair slick, and they act like they've never had to do it before. Oh, that's cold. You know the person who's just like, you're on a main road, it's clear and it's dry, but they're going like 30 for some reason. Mm -hmm. It's a 16. You're like, hey, you're going to cause an accident, big guy. Or exactly. in the reverse, people are kind of like pacing themselves when it's a little greasy and then you have some dude, some hardo fucking uh, flying wire past yeah. you. And it, all of it. Like, just drive like sane human beings. Just please. drive for the temperatures. Drive for the, the conditions. Drive for the conditioners is what I meant. Not Hot sure. performer of the week. We'll switch up the order a little bit. I'll go to you first, Rick. What do you got? Well, hockey's a team game. So mm -hmm. I'm giving it to the entire team because every aspect of this team, I believe, is in this, going in the positive direction. It's led us to a five in a row and eight out of 11, I think, and I don't see it stopping anytime soon. So this is the entire team. I like this right here. BM. Yeah. Shohei Otani. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Yeah, baby. I'm waiting for the official contract, but I have got a jersey built in the MLB store that as soon as I see his handsome face... <clears throat> Signing that contract on TV, that order is being completed. <laughs> and I assume he's going to wear 17. Sorry, Jose Barrios, but you're probably going to get a Rolex or an Island or a Ferrari or something. Yeah, like three Ferraris. Man. I think you'll be okay. So Shohei, today was just been fun. I don't know that I've seen the Canadian sports internet united in a way that today was. So Shohei watch, Otani watch, Shohei Otani, hot performer of the week. But I hadn't been forgotten, I do. There are still some people out there who are very upset about this on this side of the border, but they've been always been Expos fans, so they hate everything Toronto does. Fair enough. Liam, Hot Performer of the Week? Hot Performer of the Week. Yeah, I can't really think of one, so I'll say I was at a, a, show, a hockey showcase last night that I'll be going to again this weekend, and it's always funny to see who the coaches can be. So you say I saw Jerome McGinley, mm. Kyle Chipchera, Mm. And uh, former friend, teammate of mine, Kyle Chipchura, and friend of the nation, Laddie Schmid was there. He's not coaching, Laddie, but he Laddie. coaches the Oakings, and he was scouting. So it's kind of funny to see those get get some contacts, get these guys on the show. No, I just stand at the other side ah. of the rink and go. Boston Bruin legend Jerome Ginla. Yep. yep. Pittsburgh Penguin legend Jerome Ginla. I don't know Avalanche. any other. I don't know any other team he played for. The big guy is smoking oh, like, hot. Dano, what do you got? I'm just going to give it out to a little bit of light content that came out this week. Uh, Vasilevsky uh, was doing a post-game press conference Love after a getting fart. a shout-out. And, uh, yeah, he just uh, let one rip on the air. Was it him? just smiled through it. I, I, nobody's confirmed him it. and it was a reporter, so yeah. I, I really don't know. Nobody's it confirmed funny. it, but his reactions, his mannerisms, it felt like a man a little bit lighter afterwards. So <laughs> Vasilevsky gets my hot performer of the week. He's a hot guy. His face kind of drooped a bit. <laughs> no, he was happy. He but was relieved. Yeah. Doesn't matter what age you are. Yep. It's always fun. Nothing unites a room of dudes like a good fart. <laughs> or true. gets everyone away from you on the aqua dance floor. 
That's also, also true. <laughs> also, yeah, very, those very reporters true. are lucky. Otani doesn't have a little Uremjuk ability in him. Yeah, that, that, that wasn't a fart. No, that, man, was, that was this is bioterrorism. <laughs> 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 Look at it. I know everyone. People are gonna be sitting there saying, "Oh, you're you're being a little over the top no, here." Man. No, I promise you, I'm not being over the top. And the look of pride on his face, too. <laughs> Just the worst part about it. All right. Uh, my hot form of the week is going to go to Ross Atkins. Uh, this would be like if Ken Holland were to somehow magically come out right now and be like, I've signed Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl to matching lifetime contracts. And it's like, oh, all your mistakes are forgiven. Thanks, Ken. Like, <laughs> Ross Atkins, I wanted him fired three weeks ago. I am now ready for his statue to be built outside <laughs> Rogers Center if this happens. Unreal, Ross Atkins, top form of the week. Cash money. Put some respect on my name. Why? What's wrong with it? Our, our microphone stool is not as balanced Terrible. as we... Tyler As it once literally was. cannot right. move during the show. No, we can't. We're stuck. Um, all right, there you go, everybody. A wrap on an Otani Oilers podcast, which is I know what you all wanted. Listen. Oh, my God. Listen. It's not every day something like this happens. Quite it's literally. Fun. It's not every and lifetime. And the fun part about it with the Blue Jays, too, is that they're kind of neutral gang tor- territory in this in this country where, like, if you go down and you have, like, an Oilers... If you go down to Calgary, right, and you've got an Oilers hat on, people will go be like, oh, fuck you, Oilers. Like, it's fun part yeah. of the Battle of Alberta. But you can go literally anywhere in this country with a Jays hat on, and I was just like, Jays? Otani? Let's mm. ball? Montreal, maybe not. Well, they don't count. <laughs> Who cares? They're still holding on to the Expos. Yep. Listen, as the French guy on this podcast, Quebec doesn't count. All right. We thank you. That is a wrap. Uh, shout out to Alberta Blue Cross. The new collections dropping at Nation Gear, Wendy's, DoorDash, and our friends at Greta will be back on Tuesday when the Oilers could potentially be on a seven-game heater. Let's hope that happens. Chat with everybody then. Woo! Friday, baby. Yeah, let's celebrate Friday. <laughs>